Ms Payne with a question, please. Thank you, President. My question is for the Minister for Mental Health. As a part of negotiations on the Victorian Public Mental Health Services Enterprise Agreement 2020 to 2024, a memorandum of understanding was agreed upon by the Health and Community Services Union, the Australian Nursing and Midwifery Federation, the Victorian Hospitals Indust Industrial Association and the Victorian Labor Government. This memorandum provided for the delivery of a further 800 positions across all mental health services in Victoria. This was a welcome promise. Mental health services, particularly bed-based services, are understaffed, overworked and often unsafe. Unfortunately, we understand that this government will no longer be delivering on that promise. Now, I understand that this may be a matter for the Minister for Industrial Relations, but given the urgency on this issue, I ask, will you advocate for the implementation of these 800 positions? Minister. President, I thank Ms Payne for her question. Uh, and can I say from the outset, uh, I want to acknowledge the amazing work that our mental health workforce do each and every day right across the system, whether that's in the acute end of the system or in community um, mental health or in our um, locals, wherever they are, they are doing amazing work, uh, which is helping to change lives and indeed save lives. So. Uh, I will always stand with our uh, amazing workforce um, and I want to acknowledge that the success of the implementation of the Royal Commission's recommendations, um, our workforce is really at the heart of a lot of that. Uh, so our government will continue to back our mental health workforce. We've already invested $600 million, uh, which is the largest investment in our state's history. Uh, to grow and support and retain mental health workers. Um, that has resulted in, uh, between 2021 and 2023, an additional 1,700 additional FTEs across the system. Uh, and that represents a 17% increase on uh, our workforce uh, numbers, well and truly above those historic um, averages each year. Now, those roles include nursing, they include lived experience workers, medical, psychology, social work, occupational therapy and other um, allied health workers. Uh, and there's more on the way. We've also recently in this year's budget invested $15.8 million to increase the pipeline of workers in our locals, the missing middle, if you like. Uh, that is incredibly important because the continuing rollout of those services means that we're um, providing support to people early, uh, which means that we alleviate pressure on the acute system and on our emergency departments where before the locals existed, that was really the only option for people beyond just going to their GP. So I'm absolutely committed to supporting our workforce and we'll continue to do that. I try to get out to different mental health services, including our acute services regularly, and make a point of talking directly with the workers about what they need in their services and what's going to make a difference. We'll continue to work in good faith with unions that represent the mental health workforce, including HACSU, um, as they progress their enterprise bargaining negotiations, which are currently underway. Ms Payne, supplementary. Thank you, President, and I thank the Minister for her detailed response. I appreciate it. Uh, by way of su supplementary, occupational violence and aggression in the mental health sector is an ongoing and serious issue, and we did hear from uh, many lived experience workers as well as um, many of the nurses in the sector just recently on this. And it's an issue that's likely to worsen if understaffing is to continue. So I ask, what is the Minister doing to ensure that mental health service workers are being kept safe and understaffing is being addressed? Thank you uh, for the supplementary, Ms Payne. And, um, I, I don't know if I can do it justice in the one minute that I've got, but a lot of work is going on. Obviously, key recommendations in the Royal Commission final report around reducing um, occupational uh, violence, um, uh, reducing um, restraint and compulsory treatment. Of course, the flip side to that is making sure that's not at the expense of the safety of our workforce. So I'm very mindful of the need to get that balance right. Uh, our chief um, mental health nurse who sits within Safer Care Victoria is doing a lot of work uh, right across um, particularly the acute sector of mental health in making sure 
um, that occupational uh, uh, health and safety is at the forefront of how our acute services are operating. Um, and I'm very happy to provide a little bit more detail um, outside of the standing orders for you uh, on other work that's happening. 